Hello YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. It's a malt liquor video. I'm halfway through number three for the night. I want to talk about atheism and science and God theory. And it's a fairly momentous day because I've got my hands on the third New Scientist magazine that I've read over the years to have an article about Boltzmann brains. And Boltzmann brains are really funny. See, Mr. Boltzmann, and that's B-O-L-T-Z-M-A-N-N, -N, Mr. Boltzmann about 20 odd years ago got his ideas accepted that if you have enough time then eventually in outer space some energy and some matter will come together in such a way that spontaneously a conscious sentient self-aware brain forms out of pure energy. It doesn't need a body, it doesn't need sustenance, this intelligent brain just forms. And the first time I read it they reckoned that there was about 13 of them had had time to form since the Big Bang to now. A maximum of 13 Boltzmann brains. And at the time I thought well okay so the quantum astrophysicists who were often held up as, you know, the epitome, the top end of the pyramid, the pointy bit, um, the best scientists in the world, they've come up with a, a story that satisfies their finely honed minds as to why it's okay to believe in disembodied intelligences floating in space. And there's a whole bunch of people who like to pretend that atheism is somehow scientific. And atheism, it's anti-theism, you know, like semantically, linguistically, you know, that's, that's the history of the word, anti-theism. It doesn't mean absence of theism. Theism means believing in one God. Deism means believing in multiple gods. Polytheisms and pantheisms and panentheisms and animisms and spiritualisms and lots of different isms to do with gods, but atheism is a belief in no god. It's what the dictionary says. For people who think that atheism means that they haven't got any evidence to make up their mind either way, no, you're not atheists. Not at all, not a bit of it. What you are is agnostics. Agnostics believe in nescience. And nescience is the science of not knowing. The science of not getting sucked in to jumping to conclusions and leaping to ideas. Nescience. Agnostics don't know. Atheists have a belief. They've made up their mind that there cannot be a God, there isn't a God, they can't imagine a God. Atheists got really pissed off about a year or so ago when New Scientist published magazine article about... Uh, a Canadian university where somebody with a Jewish name had surveyed a very small number of autistics, 20 I think it was, and found that 90% of the 20, right, so 18 out of 20, autistics were atheists. And it got a flash headline that correlation between atheism and autism. And the atheists went bananas. But in going bananas there were five other studies and some of them were bigger studies you know like hundreds of people and they got adult atheists and they tested them for autistic traits and found they had a quite high scores so there were five studies that had correlations between atheism and autism and the theory trumpeted in the first article was that atheists may have trouble imagining the mind of god because autistics have trouble imagining the mind of other humans and maybe that's kind of like a sliding scale thing. Okay, so the Boltzmann brains. There's right at the moment a shit fight going on between the string multiverse theorists or theologists and the Boltzmann brainologists. And Stephen Hawking was the fellow whose universe description came up with the conditions to form a Boltzmann brain. So I'd like to read to you a recent New Scientist article. It's on page 12. 
25th of May. New scientist, this is the Antipodean version. And we have quite a nice illustration of what a Boltzmann brain may look like. Dare we say, the God theory of the astrophysicists who believe that there are disembodied, intelligent, sentient brains floating in space. String theory limits space brain threat by Adam Becker. Legions of disembodied brains floating deep in space threaten to undermine our understanding of the universe. New mathematical modelling suggests string theory and its multiple universes may just provide our salvation, and that could win the controversial theory a few more backers. Okay, so string theory and multiple universes are short of supporters, and in order to get supporters, they're trying to say, if you believe us, then we will save you from the Boltzmann brains. Physicists have dreamed up some bizarre ideas over the years, but a decade or so ago they outdid themselves with a concept of the Boltzmann brains. Fully formed conscious entities that form spontaneously in outer space. It may seem impossible for a brain to blink into existence, but the laws of physics don't rule it out entirely. All it requires is vast amount of time. Eventually a random chunk of matter and energy will happen to come together in the form of a working mind. It's the same logic that says a million monkeys working on a million typewriters will replicate the complete works of Shakespeare if you leave them long enough. Most models of the future predict that the universe will expand exponentially forever. That will eventually spawn inconceivable numbers of Boltzmann brains, far outnumbering every human who has ever or will ever live. This means that, over the entire history of the universe, it is the Boltzmann brain's existence and experience of the universe, and not ours, which is typical. That's a problem, because the starting point for our understanding of the universe and its behaviour is that humans are typical observers. If we are not, our theories begin to look iffy. It has to be more likely to be an ordinary observer than a Boltzmann brain, says Claire Zukowski at the University of California in Berkeley. A particular problem is that most Boltzmann brains will exist in the far future when the universe is no more than an inky void with a past indistinguishable from the future. This would make our own experience of time's arrow highly unusual. However, if we can demonstrate that the universe has a definite lifespan, that would deny Boltzmann brains the infinite time they need to outnumber us. String theory might be able to help, says Zukowski. See, she's getting paid. Taxpayers' money at a government-funded university to suck on the milk of received wisdom and save us from Boltzmann brains. She's going to tie them all up with string theory and corral them in the multiverses. As part of her PhD research with Raphael Busso also at Berkeley, according to string theory there may be a large number of universes. All of these universes are believed to come into existence through a process called eternal inflation, in which at least one universe continually expands at an incredible rate while others form and grow within it like bubbles. This pool of universes has been dubbed the multiverse. Many of these other universes could be chock full of conscious creatures early in their histories when, like the, multiverse, like the universe we see today, the past is distinct from the future. That could help make our point of view the standard one. Maybe, perhaps, that could But if these universes eventually become featureless and continue to linger, they will all accrue Boltzmann brains, tipping the balance away again from us. Zukowski and Busso's latest work suggests this won't happen. Universes are constantly budding off a parent universe in the multiverse, so the parental characteristics can determine what kinds of, quote, baby universes form within it and whether those universes will stick around long enough to be filled with Boltzmann brains or decay first. Busso and Zukowski performed a mathematical analysis of multiverses that start out in one of two different initial states. An older model, first suggested by Stephen Hawking and his colleague James Hartle 
Hawking's supposed to be the smartest bloke alive. And a newer model that has come out of mathematical treatments of the string multiverse. While the Hartle Hawking model ended up overrun with Boltzmann brains, ordinary human like consciousnesses prevailed in the newer model. That makes our view of the universe reassuringly normal in such a multiverse. So says Physical Review D, to be found at doi.org slash mkj. The very idea of string theory in the multiverse is still controversial. Oh, gee, why would that be? It is often attacked for being overly complicated and difficult to prove. If Busso and Zukowski are correct, though, and, bracket, not written there, but if it can help resolve the problem of Boltzmann brains, the theory may just win a few more backers. This is potentially an added experimental success for string theory and eternal inflation. Potentially an added experimental success. God, they like spin in this bloody magazine. Says Daniel Harlow, a physicist at Princeton University. We need to understand it better. But the fact that it potentially explains something is motivation to understand it better. Well, there you have it. The string theorists and the multiverseologists are trying to save us from the Boltzmann brains. Because at the moment, according to Stephen Hawking's view of the universe, there are perhaps as many as 13 disembodied, spontaneously forming, sentient, conscious intelligences out there in the world. Okay, and how much energy is there out there in the world? Well, back in 1996, in this little gem called Bush Poems by Chris Wharton, published in 1996, ISBN number 0646306764X. There's a little thing called socio-historical quantum theology. One of my better poems. You've got a background on page 10. And admittedly, back in those days, the universe was thought to be expanding. That was the best experimental observation that we could come up with. But it was still thought to be due to gravity. And in this poem, I went back to Captain Cook's voyage of discovery to Tahiti, looking for the planet Vulcan, which was thought to be inside Mercury's orbit, with garbage passing for logic. Their assumptions made one blink. They can see where the gravity has been in the universe, so they say. For the galaxies are all clumped together as a result of that gravity's play. And just as they did with old Vulcan without the hindsight of an ass, they're desperately trying to imagine where lies the responsible mass. The theory of Einstein and Vulcan you'd think they never, ever have read, nor the razor of mighty Ockham, or anything else which he said. The clumping of those galaxies which is, of course, caused by gravity, which may be caused by secondary mass effect, and therefore so, you see, the question to be answered is, what is the field of energy? Spread unevenly through space-time, growing somewhat like a tree. Is that the life force, the creator, enlivening souls like you and me, living on planets around all those suns, and thinking thoughts just as do we? Socio-historical quantum theology. If you want to see the whole thing performed sober without notes, just search that. Caps Locked as a movie title on YouTube. And you know what? A fellow called Brian Schmidt got observational data in 1998, two years after this was printed which led him to come up with the story of dark energy and the idea that in each nostril there's enough energy in that cubic centimetre of space to boil all the water in all the oceans on the earth in about three seconds flat. Yet somehow I'm supposed to be a dreaming, dribbling, delusional half-wit because I have a God theory. And the atheists who would like to put their faith in science 
and because they cannot imagine the mind of God are now confronted with the idea that science has found an infinite number of disembodied brains floating in space. Somehow the atheists like to think that they are uh, endowed with superior knowledge and a better understanding of life, the universe and everything than anybody who ever had any kind of a God theory. Well, yeah, I'm sorry, but as far as I can see, congratulations. The poet and the comparative theologian living under a gum tree feeding bread to the kangaroos has kicked all of quantum physics into a cocked hat. You know, like, effectively, I shit on your household gods because I was in print two years before the fellow who thinks he invented dark energy got his observational data. When it's steamboat time, people invent steamboats all over the world independently. When it's aeroplane time, they invent aeroplanes all over the world independently. When it was secondary mass effective and a hitherto undiscovered energy field permeating all the space in the universe, that's what people discovered. But Brian Schmidt didn't get there first. I did. Chris Wharton, a.k.a. Warbles on a lot. And because I'm not qualified as an astrophysicist nor a theologian, I published my work in poetry. Because I can rhyme. Banjo Patterson was born on my birthday, both of us in the Chinese year of the ox. It's just one of those things that pisses off people who don't take a holistic view. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Next time you see an atheist, tell them about Boltzmann brains and laugh your ass off at them. Their universe has just taken a quantum shift. Quantum means small change. Socio-historical quantum theology and the Boltzmann brain. The God of Atheists explained. Malt liquor. Ciao.